Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's installment of Eat Back Quarantine Chat. Today, I'm going to chat with a very, very special guest uh, who hmm. did work at EPAC many years ago and has moved on to fame and glory. But wow. he said, Wow. I wouldn't know all about that. <laughs> I don't know about no fame and glory. Come on. It's my pleasure to introduce Mr. Alicia Proman. Hello. Hey, hey. Ed. Thank you. Oh, Thank you. I'm so happy to see you. So happy to see you. We were just saying before I started recording that you left in 97, 96. Mm -hmm. 90, I know I got here in 90. I left um, Lancaster in 97 at the end of 97. I moved here in 98, beginning of January 98, because um, I was still working at AMT at the time. Yes, yeah. And then I came to see you. Now, is this a correct memory? Godspell at the City Corp, you know, City Corp Center. Oh my God, yes! <laughs> you remember? You sure did Godspell. Oh, with all those crazy bunch. It's funny that you mentioned them because we actually had a virtual reunion two days ago. Really? All of us got together and just um, from everywhere and uh, and got together and had um, a discussion about back in the day and oh, just wow. so many things happened. So it's so funny that you that would be the first thing you bring up. Yeah, and so that so that would be like ninety seven, correct? Um, yeah, uh, actually, Godspell was Godspell two thousand. It was the same year that um, Jesus Christ Superstar was playing in the city on Broadway, and we were off Broadway. So yeah. um, that, uh, so it's been 20 something years, because I took over as artistic director in summer of 96. And wow. I only, I, even though you did so much work around here before you left, we only mm -hmm. worked together once. Yes. In Secret Garden. That's right. Uh, and One I, of my I, favorite shows ever, actually. <laughs> it I'm was. One of my memories of Secret Garden, one of my best memories, okay, and I've never forgotten this, is see, we were doing Secret Garden. I was still working at Boscoff behind the counter, a la Joan Crawford, and <laughs> shop girl, and um, he used to pick me up to drive me to EPAC for rehearsal. And so you would pick me up at Boscoff, I'd get me oh my God. to rehearsal, and we would laugh. So I just remember us like just laughing. We always laugh. We oh, laughed before laugh. we started this 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 chat and talk today. That's so we've been we laughing. Laugh. For... I remember it's that. It's easy. So, what? so oh my god, that's so crazy. I know. I know. Wow. Um, that was the first show Sean Young ever did for me as well. That's right. Oh, isn't he spectacular? <laughs> yes, he is. Um, so. But you did so much other stuff here, including EPAC and Apple and AMP. So um, let's start and talk to us about your early years here at, at um, in Ephrata and Lancaster. Oh my Street. gosh! So yeah. when did you start? When did you start? Um, God. Well, you know, um, I was born in Lancaster. Yeah. Uh, I was born in Lancaster. You know all of that. And then uh, um, one of my first shows in Lancaster was at Ephrata. If I recall correctly, it would have been um, Chet Zerker directed it. It was a three-person, I think it was starting here, starting, starting now. now. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that was the first show I had done in Lancaster in the community theater, in any production. Wow. I hadn't done anything oh, really? prior to that. Well, which um, high school did you go yeah, to? I went to J.P. McCaskey High School. Oh, you went to your McCaskey? Um, and... Um, McCaskey, correct. And then uh -huh. I, uh, the first and only show I ever did in McCaskey was my senior year, and I did Music Man. Okay. And, and I was in the barbershop quartet. Oh my God. <laughs> Light of Rose. Oh, oh God. And you know, I was crazy. I was crazy. <laughs> but um, I remember that was the first show I had ever done um, in high school. It's the only show I ever did. And wow. then, um, and then, you know, I went to college. I went to college out of out of uh, Pennsylvania. I went to Towson first, and uh, then I went to uh, um, Towson, uh, Towson, then Georgetown. But um, I left, and then I went to Los Angeles. Oh, okay. remember? And then I moved to Los Angeles, and I was there for about I think it was seven years. I was working in banking forever. I remember you working in banking. I don't remember. I, yeah, I don't remember you yeah. to go to Los Angeles. I left, yeah, and then I came back to Lancaster, and then I started working for, at the time it was, 
it was right before Mellon Bank. Um, I can't remember the name of the bank before they changed it. Uh, and then we worked at Mellon Bank and then I was a, a branch manager of banking in downtown Lancaster. And then that's why I, I said, I want to do some theater. I, you know, I've, I miss singing, I miss doing all that stuff. And then I got, I went to Ephrata. Um, and Ephrata became kind of my home because I really started there and I worked there, you know, was very fortunate enough to work with the, um, the summers there often um, because you cast me in Secret Garden, Chet Zerker, um, and um, I, uh, so starting here, starting weren't you Moonface and I was Moonface Martin, anything yes, Anything Goes. I did Judas in Superstar. Was that with Michaels for like Michaels that, production? Yes! yes. <laughs> oh my God, where is he? I think of you him know what? also so I, often. I, I uh, lost, uh, he's in Seattle last time I talked to him. We yeah. used to talk a lot and then it's like, we don't anymore. But last time he went, he lived in New Orleans for a long time. And then he moved from New Orleans to Seattle. Yeah. Uh, oh my God, I, my, oh, don't tell me, Luella. Michael Luella, yes. Oh my and God. And then superstar with people, the audience got blood on them. Oh my Lord. <laughs> God, I remember. Um, so I, I worked there a lot and I was really, I just love it. It's one of the places that even when I, um, if I ever get interviewed and they talk about my early days in theater, I always mention Ephrata because it was one of my, it's just one of my favorite places ever. I loved yeah. it there. I loved it there. I loved everybody. Everybody was always so wonderful and committed and we had such a great time. And mind you, it was still when we were doing the theater in the park where it was a hot box and nobody cared. We just loved being there. It was hot. Oh my God. It was so I remember crazy. one of my favorite stories of Ephrata was, oh my God, I'm, I can't believe I'm gonna tell you this, <laughs> was we were doing, um, uh, what's that? The Fantastics. With Nels Martin directing it. Yes. Mm -hmm. And there's a song in the show that, um, uh, he sings to the young girl, Louisa, mm -hmm. and it, it's, it was the rape song. I don't know if you remember. I'm sure you oh, know yes. it all. They're very um, confrontational now. They had a chance. Yes, correct. And Ed, I don't, you weren't there, I'm sure. Thank God, because I, would, <laughs> I was more, already mortified. I remember the song starting, and I remember the just little vocalese of where he says rape for the first time, just the word rape. And for the entire rest of the song, I could not remember a single word. Mm -hmm. So the entire song I sang the word rape to this, to this little girl on stage. And all I could hear were people running from the wings and backstage running to the wings to see what was happening. I remember looking at little, the girl who played the Wisa and she looked up, up at me and she Jennifer said, Jennifer Will? Like, yes, Jennifer. Jennifer, Jennifer, Will. Jennifer, Jennifer Will. Yeah. yeah, she looked up at me from her hands and she says, I can't help you. <laughs> I can't help you. And I was mortified, and I'll never forget that as long as I live. I oh, tell that story to this day. Lord, that is too far. And that's all you sung, just one lyric over. <laughs> just one word, rape. And I sang all the, you know, the melodic line, but it was rape. The word rape, everything. I think it was three minutes and 32 seconds, if I remember correctly. It was oh, the most horrible. horrible. Shut up, Ed. It was oh. one of the most crazy experiences of my life. I, I, but, you know, I everything know. happened yeah. there. Oh, I love Ephrata. Oh. Everything happened there. I loved it. Some of my favorite moments were there, and some of my, you know, some of those moments like the Fantastics will stick with me for the rest of my life. It oh. was unbelievable. We had a good time in Secret Garden. I remember that having a really good time. Oh my God. I, oh, it was magical. Everybody, <laughs> everything was magical, and you, were, you are such a great director. And, um, and uh, I remember Sean, and we just remember everyone. It was uh, a very special show at a very special time at Ephrata and the music was just so beautiful and yeah. we, had a we had a chance to do it and it was magic. It, it was, was really magic. It was really there, hasn't, there was and never and a show. Patty, rest in peace, remember Pat Cowder helped on that show. She was like a yep. assistant. It was Kevin, Kelly. Yeah, it was like old Holt Week. Yeah, it was, yes, it was really, amazing. And it was, um, it was really, and if Sherry, I know Sherry Heller watches these, so I hope she's crying. Sherry, I hope you're crying right now because you grow up. <laughs> Remember Sherry, <that>. oh, <laughs> and um, oh my God, Elizabeth, Patey. Hey, was Patey in that? 
No, she wasn't in that, but it's oh. just one of those people that sticks out. It sticks oh, out in course. my head from of all course. that time and the, the magic of the effort of performing arts. <laughs> <laughs> she is diva. She was diva early on when I first met her, too. So she's always been a diva. She deserves a title. Um, yes. Diva in the best sense of the word. Absolutely. Um, so, and then you worked, but you worked at other places when you worked. I did. Mm -hmm. um, I worked there. And then, of course, I had my first show at um, Dutch Apple Dinner Theater, Show Place in the Trees. Mm -hmm. was um was uh I'm gonna say west side story oh west it was side west side story, story. Oh, okay yeah west side story was my very very first show and then uh ray ogden they were opening up a little cabaret um theater at the time when i got there and uh we did the apple tree um oh, wow. there were and we did the apple tree together that was my uh that was truly my very first show because they hired me for the apple tree first and then um west side story but i did a few things there you know i did um i remember vita uh, Avida was a wonderful time oh i did it that was magical mm -hmm. um i did Avida. i did several christmas shows i always sang the christmas ballad oh holy night or one of those <laughs> which was fantastic um i did pajama game there i did um crazy for you um just so many fun things Wow. But, uh, but, uh, what's the other one? Singing in the Rain. I, I remember I did Singing in the Rain because I used to uh, understudy um, Keith Shaw. And there oh. were certain shows that Keith Shaw wasn't able to finish because he was already rehearsing the next show. So I would come in and I would play his part. Yeah. Um, uh, that's a lifetime ago. <laughs> and then, um, oh my God. And then the show that I worked with Elizabeth was um, A Little Night Music for the Fulton Opera House opera company yeah. and she was charlotte and i remember every time she would sing uh every day a little death i would go to the wings and i would watch and listen to her she was glorious and i played henry one, I, one of my I, little light music and i'll give this away um nobody but still this idea but it, when we come back hopefully when i want to do a little light music with her as Madame Armfeld, she would be oh, incredible. She would be glorious. <laughs> yeah, she, she, does, about, she does talk about that little night music. She does. Um, Willard was Frederick? Jim Willard? Yes. Yes. Jim Willard. <laughs> oh my gosh. There were, and Anne, Ann, what was her name? Anne Meter. Anne Meter. Anne Meter. Yeah. Yeah. She was like, there. Yeah. And oh, there were so many wonderful people. Um, Oh my God, it was, I, I, it was one of my favorite things I had ever done because uh, I had, that was one of the, actually one of the very first times that I knew. Were you, were you Henrik? You I was Henrik. Henrik, okay. Yeah. I was Henrik. And I, they tried to teach me how to play that cello for real. <laughs> and it, <laughs> I'll never forget that in the review they said, Eliseo Roman sang it, sang it really well or whatever, and then he, and acted it really well, but he was in a constant fight against the cello. <laughs> they noticed that I was like a hot mess. Why did they make you play a cello? That's crazy. I didn't, trust me. By the time, by the time the show was started up with audiences, I was just bowing it, bowing at it like I was nuts. I said, I said, I'm doing the best I can. I can't help the people. Just let me sing the song and act the song. Let me just do that. <laughs> and so then um, around that, and then you worked at AMT when AMT opened. You worked I there. did. I, yep. I actually, Pat I was in the Pat very Cowder. original company with yeah. um, Pat Cowder and Nels Martin. Right. Um, and I remember. Nels passed away. I don't know. Pardon me? Nels just passed away. I, I know that. Yeah. Um, I sent um, condolences to the family. Yeah. And, um, and I. I went to Pat's memorial um, and sang yeah. at her memorial because Pat was also one of those people who was influential for me um, yeah. in my life, you know, through yeah. through my experiences there in Lancaster. And, uh, yeah. and Nels was too, and everyone. I mean, there's so many people that I could, that um, I worked with in Lancaster that always come to mind at some time right. during my life here in New York. Yeah. And I think back at that particular time saying, oh, this is, this is why I know this. This is how I learned it. This is, you know, these are the people that influenced me in so many different ways that I didn't know until the moment came up and I experienced it all over again. So, so let's now yeah. jump ahead and talk about why, when you left to go to New York City, mm -hmm. why you left, what happened, what were the events that brought you to New York? Well, the reason I had gone, come to New York initially was... Um, I was working at AMT, and they had an audition 
in Philadelphia, I had heard that they were having open calls for replacements for rent on Broadway. And I was a rent fanatic. I loved the show. I, I had never seen it, but I had um, heard the music and it's just one of those rent heads. Yeah. And I went to Philadelphia and I called in sick from AMT and I went to Philly and to make a long story short, I was one of five people that were kept at the very end and was asked to come to New York for auditions. So I, um, I did go to New York and um, uh, I did really well in the callbacks to the point where Michael Greif had invited me to come see the show and, and watch the person who was Angel at the time and so on and so forth. So I, at that particular point, I decided, well, if, if I'm going to make a change and if this is a possibility and I'm, and I'm going to get this, so I thought at the time, um, yeah. I'm going to do it. So I went to the bank and I told my family that I was going to take a leap of faith that I had, you know, I had done my banking career. I had done everything they had requested. And now it was my time to try to figure out if I, if I'm enough, I thought. And so what I did was I moved to New York um, uh, with my then partner and, um, and I started auditioning and I kept coming, getting, back to rent and back to rent and uh rent never panned out um i was uh put on the list because what happened was my friend wilson cruz uh who was a tv star and he he got the slot and so i was put on hold and um they kept calling me back in for it and then just came to the point where i told heidi from bernard telsey casting not to call me anymore because it was disheartening yeah and I, couldn't, I couldn't take it yeah. So, um, but I was already here. I moved to New York because of rent, really, and the possibility of making a life changing and mm -hmm. just seeing if I could do it. You know, and I did. I came to New York and I stayed. I um, have been here since '98, basically, and uh, I'm very lucky that I came, really, because really? you and I both know so many incredibly talented people who come to New York and um, don't get an opportunity. Right. And I was very fortunate that I did. It, it came much later than I had hoped. Mm -hmm. um, I was able to work and do things here in the city, which was great. But it, that Broadway opportunity didn't come until, you know, 10 years later almost. Yeah. And which was? In the Heights. In the Heights. With Menno Miranda and, uh, yeah. and that whole experience. Wow. So, so that tell, was, uh, tell us how that happened. Like that story of how you... Um, How I got in there? Joe, and the famous, I'm going to mispronounce Piagua, Piagua Man. Oh, I know, Piagua Man. Yeah. <laughs> um, that's so funny. I always get, I have get friends who just periodically send me a picture of their radio on their TV, or um, radio in their car, because Cirrus plays my song and they send it to me out of nowhere. It's crazy. <laughs> um, but what happened was, um, I belong to a group called the Broadway Inspirational Voices. And... Uh, Mandy Gonzalez was also part of that uh, choir and she came in one day and we were in rehearsal and I said what's going on with you what's happening she goes well I'm doing this new reading and a workshop of this show called In the Heights with Lin-Manuel Miranda nobody knows any of us and you know you should be seen you should try to get seen for it because it's a very Latin very um you know, it takes place up in Washington Heights and the music is amazing I, you know we don't know what's going to happen but you should try to get seen. At that particular point, I still didn't have an agent. So I took a chance and I submitted myself to Bernard Teltzik casting and hoping that someone would take the, the chance and call me in. And they, and it, they did. And uh, I remember getting the material and going into the room um, for, for my audition. And they had sent me, they asked me to sing something of my own choosing. And I walked into the room and at that particular point, I didn't know anybody behind the table because they're all brand new besides Bernard Telsey and casting. But there was Alex Lacamoire, there was Tommy Kale, there was Lynn Manuel Miranda, there was Andy Blankenbuehler, they were all there and um, I sang my song and then I remember um, Lynn asking me, um, Eliseo, do you sight read well? I said, I do. Um, I, ha I just wrote the father's song, um, Kevin's song, and I'd like you to see if you could sing it for me. I want to hear what you sound like if you would sing it. So uh, I took a few moments and looked over it. We played the key. And then Alex said, Alex Lacamoire said, I'm going to play the song. 
let's just come over to the piano. So I sight read it once or twice and sang it. And then um, literally the next day I got a call and said, um, we want you to come back for the final callback. Um, and so I did. And then Andy Blankenbuehler uh, put us through a combination. And the next day I got a call from the general management saying, you're getting an offer. And I said, I am? Wow. And yeah, said, we're going to give you an offer for a guy called Piragua Guy. I said, well, who's that? <laughs> I said, who's that? I've been singing Kevin this whole time. I thought I was in for the father. <laughs> she goes, well, I know that you don't know who the character is, but, you know, um, <laughs> she said, um, you don't know who the character is, but he kind of opens the show. He has a few little ditties throughout the show, but it's, it's a wonderful little part. I said, well, I'm not going to be the father. <laughs> and I said, I told her, well, no, can I think about it? Now, oh, see how bold I was? Not. I was oh crazy. God. She said, well, sh sure. She said, I said, okay, well, I'm going to think about it. Let me think about it overnight. Oh. So she said, great. Let, let me know tomorrow. So I literally talked to my partner at the time. And I said, look, they want me to go in for this guy named Pedagra. I don't know who it is. It's an ensemble, maybe. I don't know if I should do this. She, he looked at me like I was crazy, like you're laughing at me now. And he said to me, it is your Broadway debut. It is what you have been waiting for for 10 years. It's not Broadway. It was off Broadway at the time because we they say, were just starting. Yeah. Broadway. Uh, where right. did it start? It started off Broadway. Off Broadway at 37 Arts on okay. 37th Street. And, um, and I said, it's brand new. You know, people are in it. It's very Latin. It's very you. They like you. What are you thinking about? What are you saying? I said, you're right. I'm crazy. I'm just nervous. <laughs> So I called her back. I took it. And then um, it started. It started with uh, a, a workshop with just with Andy Blank and Bueller. It was about 10 of us just to do uh, movement choreography. Um, and then we started off Broadway. And, you know, we, we didn't know what was happening. We just knew that people were coming back and coming back and coming back. And, you know, we just stayed hopeful and excited and thrilled. But we didn't know it would become what it became, really. And yeah, it was amazing. It was an amazing experience of my life. A lot of those people and I are still as close as we were back then. Now, you know, uh, we're all very close. So it was magical, magical, so magical. That was when it moved to Broadway. How long did it take before it moved to Broadway from 37th Street to Broadway? It was, oh. um, six months. Six months. Yeah, we were off six months. And then we rehearsed for two, two months and started previews. And uh, then we opened in February. And, uh, you know, with that show, I, I kind of was the perfect experience because I experienced everything that could possibly be amazing with that, my first show. From, you, from getting hired, um, from doing an off-Broadway run, to meeting so many people, to the show being, a, you know, the talk of the town, to then transferring yeah. to Broadway, to then, you know, opening night on Broadway, to to then getting all those nominations and then winning the Broadway, you know, uh, best musical of the year. Um, it was from top to bottom, the most incredible experience of my life thus far. Wow. wow. Yeah. Uh, what was it like that opening night? Just what was it like? Cause you do open the show. I mean, that's yeah. when you were the first people on stage. Yes, so, I did. What, I just, what was that like for you? Like on Broadway first night you're opening a show, like, well, I, I can tell you that the, the thing that I had to be very careful about that I, that I knew that, I, that in that moment, that night, uh, opening night that I'll never forget, um, was to be very careful and not my emotions get away from me. Right. Because one of the things that I, I learned um, all these years that took me to that point was that, you know, especially for opening night, the emotions can take you. Mm -hmm. um, but you have to kind of keep yourself in check and take, put yourself in the place where you need to be because the audience is waiting to, to receive this experience, to receive the story, to be moved in whatever way the show is going to move them. Right. And my charge was the responsibility of bringing this character very carefully to life and being truthful and honest. Right. And so I know that we, we were all excited. We were all backstage. We have our daily circle of prayer that we did every, every show from the time we started to the day the show closed um, because we were also grateful. And so um, 
appreciative of the opportunity to be such a hugely Latin uh, populated uh, show and to be in the place that we were. Right. So we were all grateful and very humbled. Um, but I remember as the show went on, the, the, the emotions were taking people through different scenes and different moments. And uh, I remember my moment where I kind of, my first moment was in Carnival when I got to watch Andrea, Andrea um, start singing the song and, and then Lin-Manuel Miranda would join. And then I came in uh, and the three of us really kind of sang the song with the ensemble in this joyous moment. And it's one of the first times that we could look into the audience and sing it as if we were looking out into our city. And right. I got so many pictures of Latin people and all these people that were just beaming at this experience. Wow. And uh, it was, it, it almost took me down. <laughs> oh. It almost took me down. I'm not gonna lie to you, it almost took wow. me down. But, um, but then we continued with the show. And then I remember um, the last beat of the song of the show, which is home. I remember the lights going off. And I remember crying profusely. And, you know, I kept thinking, you know, I kept saying, thank God for this experience, for the fact that my family could see this experience. My parents could be present. Were they there and, all night? My open. parents were there open night. My sisters were there open night. My partner at the time was there opening night. Um, and friends. So many of us had friends that were all mutual because, you know, it's a small population here. Yeah. And uh, at that time. And uh, so it was magical. And I remember crying and saying, thank you, Lord, for giving me this chance. And know, knowing that I'm a very fortunate person to be standing here at this point. Um, because I know so many people that could be here. Um, but I'm the one who's here in the moment. So I'm grateful for that. And I'll never forget it. Every, every, every night that we, I open, have opened a show, I remember the first night. And I say those same words. Oh, I just, you almost, you almost break me break down here for a minute. <laughs> Lord, why that did is, you do it to me, Ann? Oh. That, that is a wonderful story. So how long were you with, with the show? How long were you with the show? Um, I was with the show 90% of the time. I left, um, the show got, I think it's got its notice in January of 2011. And I left in December because I was leaving to go do a new show at La Jolla um, that I had been working on. And, um, um, and I had plans to come, just return and come back into the show after we were done. Um, but that wasn't, you know, that didn't happen. So. Mm -hmm. um, but I was there, they, and then they closed. We closed in February. Okay, so you were there. Uh, yes, yeah, so all of us who had left the show all came back. Oh wow! Uh, and they had a very special uh, place for us um, uh, in the house for all of us who had been part of the original company and and had left. And there wow. were several of us, so it was very magical. Wow! Talk about two yeah. degrees with, between you and Jonathan. Two degrees from Lynn Miranda. I know. <laughs> we're both of us. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Jonathan has been working with him too and a lot and I've yeah. been uh, working with him with all the, even in the movie we've been working together because I've been doing oh. a lot of the um, the soundtrack in the movie? Well, I'm not in the movie Lynn is actually playing my part in the movie oh really okay yes wow. um, but I've been working with the team because uh, they've been doing the they were doing the soundtrack oh, for okay. the whole movie and uh, several of us were um, asked to come in and do all the vocal soundtracks for the movie which we did oh. so um we got to see him quite often and then is a very loving friend yeah. um and doesn't matter like how high or how big he gets he's always just so grounded for us you know i guess for this original group of friends that mm -hmm. uh, we all had that experience together that he's always there so i'm very fortunate in that way too he's a good friend good man so after that, where did that take after that? After oh my God, after In the Heights, I, um, after that, I think, I, well, I went to California to do a Little Miss Sunshine um, that was to come back to New York and that was with James Lapine was directing. And we had a great time out there, but it, it didn't transfer right away. So then I ended up going into, what did I do next? I guess the next big thing was Leap of Faith 
uh, with Christopher Ashley okay. and Sergio and uh, uh, Leap of Faith. We had been working on that with uh, Alan Menken for years. Um, and there were several incarnations of it. They had gone to LA and they replaced some of us uh, with dancers because uh, Rob Ashford then took over. And then Chris Ashley actually ended up coming, um, actually directing the Broadway company. So that was kind of the next big thing that came in, uh, came my way and that was a great time too. That was magical and fun and a group of people. And uh, it was very special. We went to the St. James and Oh, that's a big house. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> um, so Leap of, Faith, uh, Leap of Faith was the next thing that came along the way. Um, and uh, yeah, I was very lucky to be in that part too. Oh, that was so much and fun. And then after that, I'm waiting for Gloria Stefan. <laughs> oh my God, you're making me do a, this is like a resume yeah. check. I don't know. Um, I haven't looked at that thing for so long. I just, keep, I just try to keep hoping that I can right. move forward so I'm I don't look sorry, back. It's people want to know. <laughs> No, God. Oh, God. Um, uh, Leap of Faith. I mean, there's so many things that have happened. Yeah. You know, Leap of Faith was a great experience. Um, doing the Scarlet Pimpernel two years ago with, uh, to, uh, with um, Encore Productions was amazing. Um, doing, oh, that summer before Leap of Faith was um, Pirates of Penzance with um, Glenn Close and um, Marty Short and all those people at the Delacorte Theater. So oh, we did that. Wow. Um, so that was magical. Um, and then there was, um, oh my God, what else? I can't even think I should look, pull up my resume on my computer to see if, <laughs> what, what have I done? You know, they've done a lot of, a lot of, you know, when you're not working, you end up getting unfortunate enough to do lots of readings and workshops. So there were so many shows that I have been involved with. There's a, there's a show I'm particularly in love with that I've been working, that I worked with um, James, uh, Jason Robert Brown called The Connector um, that we did a reading up at um, Yale. And um, that's a magical piece of work that I'm hoping that comes to fruition soon um, because it's extraordinary. But um, just lots of readings and workshops. I ended up working with Radio City uh, for their spring show. It was called Hearts and Lights. Oh, I was in the initial uh, initial company that was going to be doing opening that spring show, the very first. And then two days before we started previews, the producers all called all of us into the rehearsal space and canceled the production. So we all, anyone who was in that original company called it Broken Hearts and Busted Lights. <laughs> so that's what we call it. <laughs> so that's what we were, you know, it was the... Uh, it was a, a time. Um, so lots of things happened. Um, and you know, you do continue doing readings and workshops and working with people. And you know, you always have, you know, um, the desire that all of them happen for everybody. You know, um, I've been working a lot with Frank Wildhorn. With the oh, show. really? Yeah, he's lovely. I love Frank. He's you're supposed person. to come back and give us a little concert at the old. I know. Theater, and it didn't work. The timing didn't work out. Yeah, the timing didn't work. I was working with um, uh, Mr. Dear Rector, uh, Dave, and, uh, and I was going to do a little concert coming in, and I had two very special guests that were going to come with me. Oh. And, um, and, um, but I'm hoping that after this experience happens, that we're currently in, that, that does materialize, because I, I would love to do it. Oh, I, love um, I would love to do it for um, EPAC and Ephrata and bring my friends there and hopefully, you know, raise money and do whatever we need to do to keep you guys there because um, you're essential. But you have never been in the new building, have you? I've never been in the new building. Wow. Wait so for me, you. that'll be all brand new. Yeah. Oh, wow. And, and I was, um, I remember, uh, I think it was a couple, summer, two summers ago maybe two or three summers ago, you, you were there in the new building. But when I was there, there were no shows yet because I called to see oh. if there was a show, but there wasn't a show going on at the time. Oh. Um, so I think it was late summer or maybe too early. But I remember they, there wasn't anything going on. I said, well, I'll, I'm going to come up. I'll find it. I'll get here soon. So we'll oh. see. Maybe this yeah. year, because obviously. I, I want you to see the new building because well, the old, it's unbelievable if you know the old building. Do you, uh, yeah. like, the major um, renovation is, do you remember the house? 
scary basement that used to be downstairs. That's yes. where the <laughs> I do remember it very much. I hated that. I just called the silence of the lambs. Or <laughs> just like this, this like, oh, it was so scary and there was no yeah. lights. And it was like, yeah, it was like a, head. it was like walking into a sarcophagus, like a mausoleum. Know, really? It was like, <laughs> I'm going in, I'm going down, I'm not coming back out. No one's going to find me. It's over. <laughs> I oh my God! That. I'm glad to see somebody tied up. You know, oh, <laughs> but um, that—that's really the major renovation that was all redone. It's rehearsal spaces. I can't wait for you to see it. Yeah. I can't well, I've heard pe people. Um, um, I have friends who have gone there, and uh, they've told me, "Have you seen the new theater?" And I have, and they said, "Well, it's spectacular. Mm -hmm. um, everybody raves about it." So you—you've done an incredible job, all of you. <laughs> well, Africa, it, was, and, uh, it, it was Dave Derwector and um, Sean, Sean, Sherry, yeah. Sean. They really were the bulwarks of, of um, and the managing director at the time, Stephanie Sai, uh, they were the, and myself, we really pushed for that, that new space. Wow. Um, That's because remarkable. the old theater, at least it was just a matter of timing. That theater, as you realize, it was, it was basically falling apart around us, the old building, so. I know, but I mean, there was so much magic in that building too. So it happens. It, you know, but, but that's I, a great I don't have that nostalgia life. for that because I had to work there during the 110 <laughs> degree weather. Squirrels running around, possums running around on my desk. I have no nostalgia. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. The little yeah. birds flying through. The little stage. bats flying through and one toilet for 30. Oh my God, that was so fun. It was fun, it was fun, it was fun. It, it was, it was, yeah. I would say, you know, at the time it was um, sort of like the audience had to be courageous to go there. Then we got a, a certain type of, it was like the off, off Broadway. You had to have, you had to have a certain sense of adventure to go to. Right. <laughs> oh my God. But, I loved uh, it. Yeah. So what's anything you can talk about that's coming up and the fires and the calls? And um, well, honestly, it's it's hard to say anything is in, you know, is catching fire at this particular point because none of us really know what's happening. Right. Um, there's a few th things that that I had booked that were would have taken me through the end of the year, and um, sadly they've been the, the theaters have canceled their seasons because they don't know when it's going to happen or if it's going to happen. And then, so you know, they were wonderful projects that I was very happy and excited about, but sadly they're not happening. Right. Um, and right now, you know, we're just trying to figure out, like, when will things start getting back to normal? I, I mean, I've had since I've been home under this New York City quarantine, um, a, a few auditions where it's a new world where we are literally just self-taping and sending things in. And it's a very different process. It's a different feeling. It's a different way of kind of you know, marketing yourself and trying to figure out how you feel. Um, so that's been very, um, it's been very interesting and, you know, eye-opening. Mm -hmm. um, there are projects that I've been involved with for, you know, a year or two that, you know, we're supposed to um, rehearse. We were doing a workshop of AIDA, which was uh, hopefully a revival that's coming. I and there's another- How did I heard about that? Yes. They're redoing the script. They're re. Writing. Yeah, David Henry Wang is re reworking it. Um, it's still the same music, but the concept of the the sound of the music, how it's orchestrated, how the vocal arrangements are done, are being redone completely, um, so that it can sound and look and be more culturally specific for the show. Right. Um, um, so that was something that was supposed to happen that didn't. Um, I've been working with Frank Wildhorn on a new show that we've, we're having a big, you know, producer presentation and that couldn't happen because it was, you know, the, everything has been canceled. So there's a few things that are happening that we are kind of waiting to see what the world is going to give us, you know. Um, theaters are canceled. You know, Broadway, we, I had hoped that you know, the shows would be able to resume by now. And, um, you know, I, I would tend to believe that probably they won't until maybe the beginning of the year. Um, so I don't know. I don't, you know, there's so much unsurety right now um, as to what's going to happen with, uh, with all of us. So, yeah, um, you know, I have friends that are in, in, in Los Angeles who are in TV shows that we're going to start other TV shows and they're sitting at home like I am. 
and you know you are right now in these virtual conversations mm -hmm. um with really not knowing when they can start you know the new projects right. or if the old projects or any project so mm -hmm. we'll have to wait and see really you know? Yep, I you know. I was thinking about that, Alicia, that, you know, if they're not going to be allowed to rehearse, it's got to be a point where there's no new product coming, even on television. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, well, you know, we'll see. I mean, the, you know, people, the, the great thing that we, we learn through these experiences, I think, are that people are very, can be very resilient yeah. and they will find a new way, you know, and it's just a matter of time that we all find that for ourselves. Mm -hmm. You know, um, there are shows that are happening now through New York where, you know, some um, theater companies are doing virtual plays where the characters are rehearsing virtually with the director. And then they have an evening where, you know, everyone comes on and it's um, and the play begins, you know, and it's all these individuals in these little squares on their comp people's computers. Yeah. Um, but they can become you know, magical as well. And, um, you know, people are just trying to find the way to bring the art and the creativity and everything that we do um, to this new place that we are in, really. Um, and it'll happen, we'll figure it out. And hopefully, if we're all fortunate, this uh, will get better and soon we'll get back to work and, mm -hmm. and we'll find a new way out to uh, tell stories. Um, the, um you know, I'm totally for the virtual experiences. I uh, very much, did you see the, uh, it was on Facebook, uh, Guthrie, artistic director, did a, a public statement, I think it was on Facebook. And I kind of like, because, you know, we're great for the virtual stuff, but mm -hmm. it's, not, it's not, the theater is a communion between audience and actors. Absolutely, absolutely. And There's that's, no, I mean, that's, yes. that's we both know um, as, as, as performers, and you know it as a director, and you know it from being in the house that, there is nothing more than the connection of an actor and a storyteller to its audience mm -hmm. and the energy that is given back and forth. Um, and there's just nothing like it. That's why I really love live theater. I, I don't love, you know, uh, television and film, even though it's a much more lucrative career, but I, I miss it. I need to feel it. That's yeah. kind of why, you know, theater to me is everything. Yeah. yeah you know, it's a very special time, it is. Uh, but you know, and people uh, are taken away from their personal lives and yep. you know transported to somewhere different and, and new and and the actor slash storyteller slash artist and the audience take a different journey together every night because you know mm -hmm. that a uh, audience is more than fifty percent of the show experience. They can change, an audience can change the show one way or another. You've been in mm -hmm. shows that some night is one show. And the show is the same, but the experience is different depending on how the audience, the feedback you're getting Absolutely. from the audience and how the audience is responding. And it's that journey uh, be, with with performer, with artist and audience spectator performer uh, that really is like once you connect with all those people and take the journey together and you feel that communion, there is nothing like that. Ever. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's yeah, it. We, all it achieve, we all want that. We all achieve that. That's what we yeah. want. We that's on. what we all crave every night. You know, and that's what we, that's why we are able to, you know, that's why we got into it is the fact that we love to have that connection with not only with the audience, but, you know, every day with the other actors on stage, it's a life. It comes create it creates this new life force and the new life form on stage and with the audience. And um, like you said, every shows, the shows are the same every night, but they're not because each night is, is different and we feel different every day. And every day we go through different experiences that we bring with us as that character on stage, which means that we are changed every day. Yes. Um, yeah. And things can, can, uh, can go deeper and, and, um, it's more revealing sometimes, and it's it's magic. It's what yeah. theater is all about. It, it, so it, I miss that. I miss that very much, and we all miss it. And here, I talked to several of my friends who are in theater, and you know, we're all kind of sitting in our apartments, and we're all talking about how much we miss the connection, and not only to ourselves as actors, but to the audience. Yes, and I was going to say that, but I'm finding myself missing uh, more than anything else at this point is working with a group of actors, a shared goal, shared creativity, that mm -hmm. when you're in the process of rehearsal mm -hmm. and in a play and just that 
that experience of that that, that camaraderie, that whole familial camaraderie. experience. We are all going for the same. I just that's what I really miss at this yeah. point right now. I agree. Um, you know, because it's such it's such a, a, an intense sort of a contact with other people. You know? mm -hmm. It's my so, favorite time. It's my yeah. favorite um, part of the process is to, of doing the show is the rehearsal because you do bring all these these people that may or may not know each other um, and they kind of run naked in this place in the sandbox so that you can yeah. create all these stories and create new work and you become so close and in love with each other and um, you're free and you are revealing and you are exposed in, in a way where it doesn't happen often and you create these magical moments in that room actually and i miss that connection of all that yeah actually you just said i love that phrase i don't know if you made it out it's yours but running naked through the sandbox yeah in your biography yeah. <laughs> well i better write it soon <laughs> that's you know, a great phrase i'm gonna steal that use it you can and have it you can have sandbox it. and that's what we do and yeah. it's very vulnerable up there as an actor it's very yeah. vulnerable Place, but that's what makes it thrilling as well. So, how are you personally doing through all this? So how, how are you, career side, just personally dealing with this insanity? What we're, what everybody's dealing with right now? How are you, spirit? Um, well, honestly, um, I um, I am very lucky. I am very lucky. Um, I actually got sick early on, back in February 29th. I went to the doctor because I hadn't been feeling well, and. Um, and I had been coughing and I, um, I ended up basically, uh, the doctors told me not to come into the office because there was something happening with a, a, a coronavirus. So the, they had closed the office and she told me, let's have a virtual meeting. So we talked and she heard my breathing and she heard that um, she asked me all the symptoms of everything. So I was not, the only symptom I did not have was fever. I never got a fever, but um, the coughing, the headaches, the chills, the aches, all, everything I, I had already had. So she immediately had put me on, I think like three forms of um, anti, um, what do they call them? I can't think. Antibiotics? Antibiotics, yeah, thanks. Um, antibiotics and viral medications and z packs all at the same time because <laughs> wow. we just didn't know what we were doing. Um, but I couldn't be seen and I couldn't get tested from the doctors because they were only testing people that had all of the, all the, symptoms. Um, all the symptoms that they thought at that particular point. So, you know, I have an apartment where I share with a roommate. It's a duplex. I live down, um, we share the apartment, of course, but my, my uh, living space is downstairs and they're upstairs. And I pretty much quarantine myself um, from that phone call forward until tonight, today. Um, it got worse. I got uh, pretty ill, and then um, I started getting better. I lost my sense of smell and taste for like three and a half weeks. Um, my cough um, had started going away after like uh, probably about the same, about two and a half weeks, but I never went to the hospital. Um, I'm still yet to get tested because they're not testing. So uh, the only thing I can do at this particular point is go to the urgent care service uh, which I'm doing this week, and just get tested for the antibodies because I'm. We're all, my doctor and I are pretty sure I had it, and uh, I'm much better. To make a long story short, so right. that's a good. Um, I am at home. My roommate is Michael McElroy. I don't know if you know who he is, but he's uh, he was the director of our Broadway Inspiration Voices, and he's uh, an actor as well, and he's now teaching um, NYU students. Um, so he's uh, um, he was here and helpful. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm, I am good. I miss my family tremendously. Um, I had hoped to go to Lancaster and see my father and my sisters and family, but, um, it was not possible to, to do that. And it's still not possible to do that. Um, so I'm just waiting for the time where I can actually, you know, either rent a car, or get somewhere and get down there and then quarantine for 14 days with my dad and, Right. And, uh, spend some time with them because at this particular point we're just unsure what, what can happen next here yeah in new york so um but i'm okay i am grateful you know i'm you know you've known me for so long you know i don't i don't try not to um spend too much time in a dark place right um i try to find the positive things in life and 
it just keeps me in a better place all the time. So, you know, there are days that have been great. There are days that have not been great, um, even since I've been better. Um, and I just miss my family. I think I miss my family. I miss the human connection. You know, seeing you today is a highlight of my month, probably because I got to see a friend, an old friend that I can share and see yeah. and hear your voice right. that I remember. Yeah. Um, and it's, um, it's a very, you know, these things are what we've, I've learned to appreciate more and more as this experience happens. Right. And um, I guess the only thing that's kept me really happy, you know, happier is that I've learned that during this time, I am reaching out more. I am talking to people that I haven't spoken to very often that have been important and people that I care about and love and, um, mm -hmm. and they're doing the same. So it's, it's a very interesting time to, uh, to reconnect with people and family. And, yeah. and that's kind of the good thing yeah. of this experience. Yeah. You know? I to to totally, totally agree. Um, and I hope, totally agree with everything you're saying. Uh, yeah, and um, I hope when things return to normal, we don't forget that because I think people will learn a lesson about connection. I think we all learned a lesson about stopping for a second and connection, right. connection. Because I know personally, I, I don't have anybody here except my two cats and I am craving just having friends over for dinner. <laughs> it's yeah. like, that would be the greatest thing in the world right now. It's just happy. Yeah, totally. Movie. So I come over, let's have dinner and watch a couple of movies and laugh. Yeah. I'm I mean, right now. Yeah. The, 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 most, the, the most fun that I had in a while was this weekend, a friend of ours um, who lives like two blocks up the street, it's his birthday. He and his partner are in their home um, and several of us friends, about 10 of us who live close by within the two block vicinity, we all got uh, birthday hats and signs and a music box, and then we told this partner to tell Jeffrey that um, something was happening outside. And uh, he came to his window, and I literally we all gathered at a park and walked over to uh, his house, and we just sang happy birthday. We had signs, we had little gifts that we put on the windowsill um, so that we could see him. He saw it, he cried like crazy. <laughs> Um, but just seeing our friends, even six feet away, just to see their eyes and see them and hear their voice in person right. was, was a gift. I mean, it was wonderful. And then to see our friend be happy and moved for his birthday, because, you know, birthdays at this particular time when you're so used to being hugged or cared for, you know, and sharing, like you said, come, come to my house for dinner and let's celebrate you. Right. And you can't. Um, yeah. It's no. those little moments that make big 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 impact and um it was a great time it was a great time that's the first time i've seen so many of my friends uh, in person so it was very special so i didn't know i'm so happy that you're okay i had no idea that you had been there, but I'm so happy you're okay right now. thank you thank you I, I am too i'm very fortunate I have, I have several friends and people who are not as fortunate right now and um aren't doing well and um you know you know, you kind of, kind of send good vibes, and if you pray, you know, whatever you believe in your personal life, um, uh, I pray a lot for my friends who are not doing well, and uh, and send them good vibes and thoughts and their families. And so, yeah, I'm very lucky. I and can't complain. Watching what happened in New York. I mean, New York. No matter how long it's here in New York, or no matter how long I'm, I haven't lived in New York in over in over half my life, really. But I still consider it home. And mm -hmm. um, and um, you know, once a New Yorker, always a New Yorker. And here, and yeah. looking what, what was going on in my hometown, it was killing me. It was, it was horrible. It was horrible. Yeah, it is. I, it, was, it, was, it was like devastating to me. And that hospital in Queens, Elmhurst General, that was in the news, that's my hometown hospital. That's where yeah. I had my family family. <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's just um, like, wow, it really hit close. Really it hit is. Close. You know, um, it, it's, it, New York City has, has definitely been hit hard with this uh, this virus and this pandemic situation that we're currently all living through. But I can tell you one thing that may give you a little solace, even though it is home and it's been difficult, is that you probably know that, but at seven o'clock every night, there is a clanging of people walk out of their homes and their windows and their, street, and their streets and their stoops. And at seven o'clock you hear this wave of applause and waves of pots banging and waves of musicians playing and waves 
of claps and laughter and whistling just for all those people who are on the front lines of this city, right. you know, trying to fight and help and save people. And that feeling that you hear, the way when it hits, is probably one of the most exhilarating things I have seen um, and heard in a long time. And it's the one thing that I look for every night, being in, indoors at seven o'clock that I run out to the, uh, the stoop. There you go. And, you know, clap. And it kind of puts it in perspective that, you know, the city is still fighting its way and yeah. we are still here. Yeah. Um, so it's a very, it's a, people are, are doing their best. Thank you for that. Well, it's been wonderful. It's wonderful it's just seeing you and talking. I know you too. And Ed. I hope it's not another Maybe program. you'll cast me someday when I come back to Lancaster someday. You can cast me in another show. I'll, oh, I'll be anything. I'll be a tree. <laughs> you know, if you want me to slap something, I will. I, I, there's, I'm, there's no shame to my game. <laughs> oh, honey. We're so happy for you. We really are. So I thank you. You can come back to the back and sing. And when I'm in New York, we'll lunch yes definitely we'll keep we'll keep in touch yes yes to it all um thank you so much for having me um it was wonderful to see you i wish you the best stay healthy stay positive um i just send you love and light i send you right okay. back sweetie bye-bye thank you be well Bye.